The acrylics are now dry and it's time for the oils. And how about these beautiful looking Rembrandt oil paint tubes? I'm using a typical range of colors, including um, things like um, permanent yellow, yellow lemon, and something a little different from the Lizarin. I'm going to um, use some permanent madder instead of alizarin. Starting off with burnt sienna and ultramarine, keeping it fairly dark, looking at sort of more traditional kind of background with uh, a warm dark color to make the uh, main subject being the pears, of course, to really pop out and uh, stand out nicely. You can vary the background slightly as well um, with perhaps warmer and cooler uh, passages of, of light in the background. Now I'm going to just add a bit of that Rembrandt white. I find the Rembrandt oil paints are extremely soft and buttery. So uh, my typical titanium white is not quite as soft as that. Getting some of that permanent matter in there. The thing when you add white to it, it changes so radically that I want it to be fairly um, rich. But this of course is the block-in stage. First pass with the oil paint. So we'll come back in subsequent layers with more rich color. Just getting some oil paint in, in all the spaces. And now the shadows, um, red, ultramarine, sort of a cool, rich color. Keep white out of these shadow areas. You want the rich, transparent color, not the white paint, which will transform it all and make it light and violet or pink or anything like that. So working off quite a small palette, so keeping it clean is a real chore. And now as I'm going into the pears, I'm going to be mostly working with yellows and white. One thing wasn't in my Rembrandt kit is yellow ochre, so I'm going to have to mix up some of that. And I thought I'd just show you. So I need a bit of red light and yellow. I'm using the uh, permanent yellow, a little touch of blue, and that's basically the yellow ochre. You can vary it in value, add a little white, but then that also cools it down, so a little touch of yellow, I think, just to warm it up again. And there's the yellow ochre which is quite an important color with painting pears. Uh, the light blue that I'm using there is also from Rembrandt and it's called Sevres Blue, probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's a sort of a light sky blue and it makes a very um, intense lime green. So I need to just break that green down a bit with a touch of red and now the whole point of this acrylic stage was to try and settle the values of the color. So the colors I'm putting in, I'm going to try and correspond with the existing value structure, the light and dark structure. But as you can see, I'm not using glazes. I'm going in with the direct paint approach sort of impressionist approach, mixing opaque color and getting that down. So having the forms already there 
with the value shapes in place is a handy way to map out your painting and uh, help you proceed with the color stage with some more confidence. So you can definitely use this method until you feel very confident with values of light and dark. In this first stage I am more concerned about simply getting in some oil paint and more or less trying to stick to the value structure. Therefore I am not too worried about putting down a brush mark and then going over it again um, because I'm going to come back with more layers of color. Even a still life painting for me is not just about getting an object that looks like a pear and then coloring it in. I want it to stand out in, in different ways. Perhaps the actual color I use or the looseness of the brushwork, the impasto layers that come in later Everything does add up to try and make the painting something different and, yeah, just to stand out a little. If I don't like the... You see, here I've got quite a dark patch that I'm just going over, but I'm not replacing it with as dark a color if I feel it's not going to... Um, contribute, I think, to the overall um, painting that I've embarked on. So that's the first pair down, and now the next one. So I'm going to just speed up a little with the remaining pairs, so you don't have to watch each one in in great detail, but you definitely can see the approach. And it's an, it does require some patience. That's very important. It can um, feel that you are repeating yourself. So you need to look for things in each pair that makes it different. <laughs> That's the character of a pair. Um, so but uh, you have to carry on, so let's just see how this progresses. When considering your color, and if it's the correct value, Remember, squinting does help. So if you squint at your color on the pair, or whatever your still life subject is, or um, you want your color to kind of merge in with the value structure that you have there. It doesn't have to um, be perfect, but as long as it's not jarring, you don't want to put a very light shape in a dark area and uh, if you do that you're changing everything so that's perhaps a severe problem with the drawing of the, the subject you need to go back and fix it but if you got all of that right then your values need to correspond but you still have the freedom to make changes Some of these colors joining up with the shadows needed to be stronger, darker values. 
So, but that can be rectified. It's it's um, it is perhaps a, a little more difficult to lighten values, but to go over with the with dark color, it all really does depend on the nature of the object. To change the shadows, for instance, is somewhat difficult, but uh, you may have to just leave it for a day to settle a bit and then come back in and paint a thicker layer over it. The stalks quite simply stated but that little touch of red coming in with the burnt sienna makes me want to bring that color into the pears themselves. So we will have to in the final layers bring in some of the orangey reddy reddish colors or those tinged colors you get to the pears themselves. Predominantly now they are greenish yellow so that complementary touch of reddish burnt sienna forms an important part of the final stage of the painting. You may be wondering whether I'm constantly referring to the actual pears themselves and the answer to that is not really. The thing is the purpose of setting out a structure like this in acrylics first is to help you paint indirectly which means without reference to the subject in these color stages of the painting. So now you've got to use your experience and knowledge to complete the painting. Of course you can refer back to the subject now and then but everything has changed by the time the acrylics have dried the light has changed and unless you have very closely controlled studio conditions the pairs no longer appear the same. So you may find that you're now referring to a photograph. Um, is that exactly the same? Uh, I find it generally more problematical to work indirectly and still refer to a reference. So what I'm really looking at is the light and dark and warm and cool shapes of these pairs and trying to get my paint to describe a th three-dimensional object while still following the value structure of light and dark. It does mean having a close knowledge of color temperature. You don't want to make your darks too warm, they have to be cool and your lights need to be warm, not too much white, that makes them cold. You can't do um, a cold light green, um, sort of a lime or a more blue orientated green as well in the warm areas. You've got to warm those up with more yellow. So color temperature becomes very important in a still life. So that's pretty much all the pairs blocked in and now going to second stage and just quickly darkening the suggestion of the table or the cloth, whatever it may be, just uh, getting some of that matter over it. Now I let it all settle, came back after second day, first day being the acrylic stage, second day was that block in and now I need to give the pairs a little bit more drama, some distinctive 
our dark shadows and then now bringing in some of the more interesting colors a little bit of orange to get that uh, sort of reddish orange blush on the pear and you can see how it immediately starts to echo the reds in the, the background it just warms everything up brings the pairs forward a bit as well helps them look more three-dimensional swapping back to a number eight brush which in the hindsight I should have been working on much sooner uh, I find the long flat just an ideal brush for carving out a shape which is my preferred way to work rather than using a round brush to make tiny shapes I like to carve out a shape and give it a three-dimensional aspect a few highlights so at this stage I'm feeling a bit more confident progress is being made with the painting a few dark accents to echo some of the um, details you'll find on the subject as well just softening up a few of those edges if you go too far with accents like this you can of course go over them so it's not the end of the world a challenge with this painting is remembering to keep the brush nice and clean it's not like your typical landscape where you can get away with a bit of mixing of color on the brush you need to try and keep the brush clean and each brush stroke check your brush and make sure you haven't picked up color you shouldn't have on that brush just wipe it off with the tissue to soften the edges I put some strong dark in but of course the edges need to be softened up the pear is a three-dimensional object and edges do need to be rounded and softened up a bit also brush marks that echo the shapes of the object kind of move the brush in the correct direction So we're getting fairly close to completing the pairs now. I will touch up some of the edges between light and dark as I'm doing now just to pull it together. Some cooler warms transitioning to the warmer lights but not too much it's very very easy to get dragged into blending where you get a fan brush and you blend it way too much so avoid that now into the background again and all the and the foreground shapes the shadows the table the background I've decided I'm going to go over them all with the painting knife to get some strong texture I've 
some interest as well not mixing the colors up too much letting the light blue show a bit and this should also help to set off the the pairs as shapes a bit of contrast between the smoother pairs and the now now what's going to become a textured background so it's something you can do in any still life or even a portrait as well. Just really loosen up the background with more abstract shapes used with a painting knife. But try and make them big shapes. You can also mix colors around, bring in things like violet or blue. Colors that are harmonious but a little more interesting as well. can see now that those touches of red give a real richness. So that's more or less the, the process and uh, I'll finish off the background with some painting knife as well. Well the painting is finally completed and in the end it was quite an epic undertaking perhaps taking longer than I would have preferred because um, I think I just got a bit distracted with um, the vision I had for this painting and I definitely prefer the more direct approach to painting, painting somewhat quicker so this um, trying to work a series of layers in oils added to the time to complete this work whereas I would rather press on with more uh, impasto layers with oils and the painting could have perhaps been completed with a little less fuss but in the end I'm quite happy so let's take a quick look at the completed painting in its frame. Right, so here's the painting. One of the things that I did, as you saw in the video starting off, was to do the foreground and background with a palette knife that is finishing it off, bringing some cerulean blue and um, some violets into the shadows and some texture to the background with uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, some blue for a bit of variety but also to contrast to the painted layers on the pears themselves. I did uh, just manipulate some of these edges a bit to soften them a little so the transition from shadow to light was a bit uh, more gentle. The finish off with just a few lighter value color and a few, one or two highlights. But that was pretty much it. So in the end, um, the conclusions I've drawn is that the Underpainting in acrylics did certainly help with the first layers. I could have taken more advantage of those of the acrylic layer and gone in with thicker impasto paint and uh, completed the painting a bit quicker that way. In the plus side or the plus column, nice rich color, good thick bit of paint and quite a sumptuous feel to it. And also I'm very happy with the Rembrandt paints. I think they are nice, rich and vibrant, nice and soft to work with and uh, very pleased with those paints overall. So there we are, the completed painting and maybe it's inspired you to try some still life painting yourself. If you found this video useful, I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe and please uh, feel free to share the painting as well. 
until next time. Cheers for now.